It's night, by the way. Oh, I'm thinking. Have I ever had... Like... Day cycles? In the demo? I'm not really sure. It looks so pretty. It kind of explains the lack of color. As in, it's very muted now. At least more muted in my opinion than when it's during daytime. Which is very logical if you think about it. It's now... I think dusk? Maybe even night? So yeah. Awesome. Uh, let's park it here with Driss. I'm not really sure whether he needs anything. I am so sorry, bike. It's not getting used to. I shouldn't press spacebar for too long. Otherwise, I'm just be gliding instead of, you know, doing stuff I need to do. One thing that I th expect is going to be really nice in this game is the high mobility. Like, I have a feeling we're going to be able to, like, climb, fight, and all the stuff to get everywhere we want, where we want to go. Uh, when I return to Hylal, it's clear that they know what I've just experienced. They're excited on my behalf in a way that makes me miss them before I've even left. It's incredible. How does it feel? It's exciting. It's absolutely true. Freedom. I tell Hyla that hovering is exciting and ramble for a moment about the things I'll be able to do when I'm out there in the world. Most of them involve me falling on my head and not getting hurt, but I'm sure I'll come up with more in practice. Right? You can do anything you want. Hyla's mood doesn't darken, but the sigh they let out holds a bit of sorrow. You're very lucky, you know. Is it so much that feeling just loading on the breeze? But I suppose it's best that it fades with age, hmm? Or else I might never have come back from my gliding. I'd just be out there having myself into the chasms. I'll put myself into chasms for you. I tell Hyla I'll throw myself into a thousand chasms for their behalf on their behalf and they giggle. That's what I like to hear. I know people manage to keep up, but I don't know that I've got time to practice as much as they do. It takes a really serious focus. Hyla laughs even if it's a bit of regret in it. But I certainly haven't got that. So, I suppose the gliding wouldn't mean as much if there were all gains and no losses, hmm? I think about that, but the side there is already too much loss on my mind to consider it much further. I am saying goodbye to my clan, my family, my home, my childhood. To lose the perpetual is a sacrifice for another time. You're going to love it out there, Sable, even when you don't. My advice? Try to have fun. There's a lot to be said about the ritual and independence and all that out there, but... The world's an easy place if you put joy first. I thank Hyla for the advice and for the help and tell them I miss them. It'll be over before you know it. A warning and a reassurance, all in once. I say goodbye to Hyla. Before I go to Hyla, uh, before I go, Hyla gestures towards the tower. It seems Saizo wishes to see me before I leave the clan. Okay, I can do that. I mean. I'm not really sure what I think of the clan. I mean, it, it seems a bit... Old. <laughs> then there'd be many people living here, but I, I imagine there are many people living here. I'm in front of the tower. I'm just going to have a quick look around because it's so incredibly pretty. And you couldn't look really far. Oh, there's smoke here, which means we can't see that much. Look at this! Saizo is an outclan to the uh, Ibex Sea, but I've known her for nearly as long as I can recall, and I think of her more as a kind of distant relation than any sort of outsider. A canist, I'm told, are given their post, and by their training and their code must go to where they are needed. But Saizo has been amongst us so long that it's easy to forget is an assignment first and foremost. As far as any of us are concerned, she's one of us. I think there's a uh, perception among the other clans that the Ibex uh, Ibexi are quite insular and that our designation of the Ibexi versus outclanners suggests that there's some nervous ordering uh, of those who are unlike us. But in practice, such things are more the result of our nomadic nature. We seek to know who will travel with us and who we must leave behind, but all are welcome to join. And I'm always pleased that Saito did. 
Table, how do you do, clan child? I can only think of one thing. Um, oh, excited for my bike. <laughs> that has a throaty quality to her voice, and it rumbles through her mask when she laughs. She's quite a serious person most days, but I'm always torn between pride and alarm when I manage to make a chuckle. Yes, Yali told me how excited you were. There's the sniffs. She also told me that Riz would be coming along to get your bike together, but I think he may have... I knew it. What? I had not meant to say it aloud, but so I tell her it was just clearing my throat. I don't uh, begrudge Triss for his forgetfulness. Were I tasked with so many odds and ends, I might just be there scattered. And besides, this will be good for you. I want you to scavenge the hover, uh, hover bike parts yourself. I'm going to make my own hover bike? I ask Sasa if I'm expected to make my own hover bike. No, you're not going to make your own hover bike. You are going to build your own hover bike. So, what's the difference? It may suggest that you're creating something, but your bike already exists. They simply haven't taken form yet. Yeah, take this. Sasa hands me something. This is a navigator you can use to mark waypoints on your compass. It should be useful to finding the old paths. Yes, Sasa, where am I still looking? Our bikes are born in uh, ruined ships. In fragments spread apart, a good start would be the ship down there near the camp. We find another one into the Great Rock, near the other side of the canyon. And another behind the old dam on the hill. You should navigate the mark down if you need. You need to get a control panel, a power supply, and a calibrator. I'll be back before you know it. Sizer, I see her soon and head off in search of the components. Together we will create something out new out of the old. It's the navigator, which is a little bit finicky to work with. Uh, is it a dam? No, it isn't. That's the old rock over there. So... I think it's that one. There's a marker there. And I'm gonna place one on them. I'm first going to the spaceship behind the camp because that one is easiest to find. Uh, there we go. How do I exit? Backspace. Okay. So if I look at my compass now, there are two markers. Awesome. Alrighty, so let's go down my bike and let's find bike parts. One of which is behind the camp, which is probably the easiest one to start off with. We're all ready down. It's night though, so I'm not really sure how nighttime is going to impact our quest for parts, but I don't think it really will. Right. Hopefully, my new bike is going to be be a bit faster than this one, but that's okay. Here we are ready. As like I said, this one isn't really hard to find. Here we are. Ooh, there's something here. There's nothing of use to be found in the ship, but I noticed a blinking... Uh, Light flashing on the dashboard of the cockpit. Let's push the button. A voice crackles from the machinery in front of me. It sounds like a recording, but it's barely audible. Stop messing about with those buttons, you absolute idiot. Sorry, Raymond. Concentrate. I don't think we have to. I have to remind you how much work it was to get this far. Almost there. All right. Let's see what I've. What the old mechanic told me holds up. If not, there will be hell to pay. I hear the sound of mechanical adjustments being made. Three clicks, buttons being pressed, perhaps? Okay, when I push this orange thing, put a lever. Hard. Yes, Raymond. A sound of a click and a loud grunt before snapping sound. Oh, on Rohana's mask, not that hard. You've torn it out. Suddenly, the speakers are filled with static and a low rumble that gradually increases in the pitch. And then the sound of something, uh, someone cheering. It worked, we're flying. More cheering. Or oh, is it the sound of someone dancing? Okay, okay, let's focus. This thing is moving fast. We need to slow it down a bit. How do we do that, Raymond? Let me check the mechanics notes. A long pause. The rumble static sounds that are playing when the ship took off is still increasing in pitch. Raymond? But leave it, Oma. The one you just ripped out. We're going too fast. We're going to crash. We need to try to... The recording cuts off there. Oh. Poor people. I don't know whether we know a Raymond. I don't think we do. Um... I mean, like, nothing is here. 
It's not all that scrap, to be honest. Hey Ma, are you looking for a calibrator? I'm immediately on guard. Sam has always been a mischief maker and taken tremendous pleasure in tormenting me. Theory, I am older, more experienced and should be more than able to withstand it. In practice though... You will never find it here. I've hidden it. You've never find it. Never. Never. He never fails to get me. May I please have it? I decide to be gentle and ask her, may I please have it? May I please have it? She mimics me terribly, all the high and screechy. Despite my best efforts, I see. Th oh well, too bad. Maybe you find it on your own, but I don't think so. They my loss of my irritation, but I'm not going to give her the satisfaction. I cross my arms and try diff uh, to effect a change. I'll give you the calibrator. I put up my hand, proud of myself for standing tall before Seima. If you give me some beetles. That's a fair trade, isn't it? Something you want for something I want. I try to decide if there's more mature to push her over and steal the calibrator. Or to... Raisins? Then I simple stifle a sign and shake her little hand. Perhaps some of the adults in the camp know where I can find some. Alright, so we're going to find beetles. As I can remember from the demo, this is the most tedious of the missions. Though it seems to be the easiest considering that the ship is just next to the village. If only it was. So we're back at the Ibex camp. And I think someone may be here to tell me where to find those things. And uh, this is the workshop. And then up here is... I think up here? Yeah, up here is uh, Hylol. Down here is Chris. So... Going up on this side of the cliff, we should be able to find some adults who can tell me where there are beetles to be found. I could ask about getting beetles for the awful little Saima. Uh, hello? There we go. I do you know where I can find some beetles? There's a nest of beetles just east of here. You can't just walk up there and catch it though. There are some seeds growing on the rocks around the nest. Drop a seed on the floor and the beetles will start eating it. Then you can sneak up and grab it. Yeah, they greet me warmly. Hello, little glider. Um, uh, It's so strange being called that. I tell Yadi how strange being called Glider instead of Sable or even Clenchild. Just trying to, trying to get used to it. Really like it, and maybe I like it too. Hi, little Glider. Alright, so we're going to get some beetles. Um, where is my. Here. Alright, let's jump down. Uh, I think I put it down here somewhere. Oh, it's there. Completely missed it. Oh well. Um, oh, east of the camp. It's... let me quickly check. Straight ahead. But it's a big oh, bit of a puzzle to get in there. I do remember. I mean, I can imagine for those who are watching this for the first time, it's a bit annoying that I know already quite a couple of things. Uh, it's just like this part. Like finding the parts and that's the thing I know. Which is quite a bit, I'll be honest. But yeah, nothing I really can do about it. I, mean, I played the demo because it's such an awesome game. I'm not going to not play a demo when it's there of a game that I want to play for like ages. Let's get through here. Uh, if I ever you're looking for some music to listen. I would just suggest go to Spotify, I think. Might be on Spotify. Otherwise, there are plenty of YouTube um, compilations of these. Um, the soundtrack here. And it is a beautiful soundtrack. It's the only thing I can say. That's true. <laughs> You really need one. As long as you're fast enough. Is it raining? It sounds like it's raining. Uh, let me get a check. Ah, 
Oh crap. I thought I had it. I have to wait till they're actually eating stuff. That's another one. Don't throw that. There we go. Uh, we can actually continue doing this because we only need three beetles. But I think we might be able to like eat them or something like that in the future. Which could come in handy, I don't I'm not really sure. Go, oh, and I think I not a bonded. Oh, yes, there is one. <laughs> this. One hand, it's a really good idea to demo because I was like doing this for like 30 minutes, I think, before I actually knew how this all worked. I didn't understand it. There we go. So now we've got a couple of those beetles. Only three of them are needed for a little girl. And we can keep the rest for ourselves. Uh, let me quickly see. Spiders over there. Oh, there it is. Well, I don't really see it, but I recognize this spot. And I need to get through here in order to get to my bike. Outside. There it is. Alrighty. Uh, so are we close to the dam? I think we are, aren't we? Yes, we are. Alright, so I'm just going to, like, forgo going back to the Ibexy camp for a second. And just go here. Because we need to go here anyway. And we're literally next to it. So I don't see a reason not to just go here and explore. That's like the greatest view is there up here. Uh, let's go the stairs. We don't have that much stamina yet. Ooh. There we go. We we're clipping through the world for a little while. Oh, that's okay. We know how to deal with it. I mean, you guys. Look at this view! so pretty it's so pretty i absolutely love it there we go some other currency i mean imagine this used like it's still called a dam but it's not really used as a dam otherwise there would be water flowing through here and i think it would be like imagine if water comes all the way crashing through here down like the ramp here then probably our home wouldn't be where it is right now because it would be flooded i think i made a mistake and i can't really get there in time can i climb this i can surprisingly enough it's like flat stone but i can still climb it that is absolutely lovely to know um i think i have to do it in there also this world is kind of puzzly you are not given a lot of information you just have to around on the other hand though you, you do see the battery and like it gives you a little bit of direction uh i think mostly because this is still like the tutorial area i mean literally driscoll is the tutorial so wouldn't be surprised there um still what are you the atomic control panel which is like the first one i need things uh there's nothing here is there anything there isn't I mean, oddly enough, let's be honest. This art style is like made for desert. And yet, while we're walking like this futuristic ship, it doesn't look out of place. Which really, really surprises me on one hand. In a good way. In a really, really good way. I mean, I know I have like pointed towards the art style for like 10 times in the last. How long am I recording? 40 minutes? In. Let's be honest, it's so stunning. It's absolutely stunning. And there's nothing that can compare to it. Like, I'm going through my mind, like, games that have something similar, even vaguely. And now I'm having a hard time 
think about the game, you could actually meet this art style. Yep, yeah, I can't think of one. Let me know in the comment section down below whether you can think of a game that has a similar art style to table. Because I can't. Uh, let me quickly check. There is something over here. Oh, it's just the big pointy one over there. Alright. So, yeah, let's see. Oops. Let's try not to ruin my bike for a second there. After we've done this one, we can actually go back to camp and trade the beetles for the calibrator. Not really sure whether she needs the beetles alive or dead, but considering that we're like out and about for half the day here, I can't imagine the beetles being very much alive. And this is the place I have a feeling we have to go procuring here.